In this video, we're going to take a look at how to do synthetic division and also take a look at the remainder theorem. So synthetic division is an alternate process for dividing a polynomial by a binomial. And it allows you to calculate without writing variables and it requires fewer calculations than long division. So let's take a look at this example here where we have this polynomial uh, divided by x minus 3. So this is how we set it up. We're going to first write the terms of the dividend in order of descending power. So in this case, it already is in the order of descending power, meaning it's x cubed, and then squared, and then a power of 1, and then there's a constant. We're going to write only the coefficients of the dividend in the first line of the box. Um, and a note, use 0 for the coefficient of any missing powers. So we don't have any missing powers. Everything is there. We have 3, 2, 1, and 0. So how does this work with a box? We're going to draw a, a line, an L, actually. And in the first line of the box, we actually only have two lines here. We're going to write the coefficients. So that would be 4, positive 3, negative 7, and 16. And we're going to write that in the top line. Then to the left of this dividend of the box, we're going to write the value of x, which will make the divisor equal to 0. So this x minus 3 is our divisor. And if I set this equal to 0, x would equal negative, sorry, x would equal positive 3 to make the divisor 0. So we're going to put the 3 on the left side of the box. Now let's do synthetic division. So the first step is, it says, to bring down the first coefficient and write it below the line. So 4, we'll bring that down, write it below the line, and that's it. We're going to multiply this number by the divisor number and place it underneath the second coefficient. So we multiply this number 4 that we just brought down by the divisor number 3, so 4 times 3 is 12, and we're going to write it underneath the second coefficient. So 4 times 3 is 12, we write it underneath here. We're going to add this number, 12, to the second coefficient, so which is 3, and we're going to place it underneath. So what we're going to do is we're going to add up all of these numbers here. So 3 plus 12 is 15. Well, again, so this next step, multiply this new number, which is 15, by the divisor number 3, and place it underneath the third coefficient. So you have 15 times 3, which is 45. Continue until there are no more coefficients. So our next step is we're going to add the numbers. So negative 7 plus 45 gives us 38. 38 times 3 is 114, so we place it under the next coefficient. In this case, it's the last one. It's a constant. We're going to add, and we get 16 plus 114, and that's going to be 130. So we place that as our last number here. So the numbers below the line, below this box, they represent the coefficients of the coefficient and the last number is going to be the remainder. So let me outline everything. So the 3 was our divisor. The top line is our dividend. This part here, the first three numbers are our quotient. And then the last number is our remainder. So from here, what we need to do is to, we'll write it out in our um, special long division form, or our division format form. So we have the P of X, which is our polynomial, divided by X minus 3. So that equals 4, so that's our first coefficient, so it's 4. Since this was X cubed, now this will be 4X squared. And we write each number in turn going in decreasing order. So plus 15x 
plus 38 plus a remainder of 130 divided by our divisor x minus 3. Now remember that the quotient is one degree less than the dividend. So since the dividend had a power of three, then our quotient will have a power of two. So let's do one more example to show you. So let's use synthetic division to determine the quotient of this division statement here. So we're going to draw our box and we're going to place the coefficients. So notice this time, however, that a squared is missing. So we have four, three, but we're missing a two. So we're going to assume that the two, the power two, has a coefficient of zero. So it'll be zero x squared, four x, and then five. So the numbers that we place in the box will be three, 12, zero, negative four, and five. The divisor that would make the denominator equal to zero would be negative four. So if you want to try it out yourself, you can go x plus four equals zero. So x equals negative four. So we place that to the left of the box. So we're gonna bring down the first number, which is three. We're gonna multiply, so negative four times three is negative 12. We'll place that underneath the next number. And when we add, we notice we get zero. So negative four times zero is zero. We add and we get zero. Negative four times zero gives us zero. We add again, so negative four plus zero is negative four. Multiply negative four by our divisor number, negative four. We get 16, we add again, and we get 21. So sometimes you'll see some books, they write this line here to separate the remainder from the quotient, and you can do that too if you like. Okay, so let's write this out. I'll actually write it out the long way this time. So our polynomial, which is this right here, divided by our divisor x plus four, gives us a quotient of three x. Now remember, this is a power of four, so our quotient will be one less degree. So this three will be three x cubed. We have zero x squared, zero x, and then a constant of negative four, plus 21 divided by our divisor of x plus four. Now the practice questions, you can um, try that in the class. Okay. So finally we get to the remainder theorem. So the remainder theorem states that if a polynomial p of x is divided by x minus a until there is a remainder, then we can say that the dividend is equal to the divisor times the quotient plus the remainder. So this is something that we've already used um, to show how we can write the answer. So if the quotient, um, let's say the quotient is q of x and the remainder is r, then let's use all of our abbreviations. So the dividend was our what we started with. So that's going to be our polynomial p of x. So that equals the divisor, which is x minus a, times our quotient, q of x, and plus the remainder. So if I divided all of um, my terms by x minus a, you'll see that we get p of x divided by x minus a. x minus a will cancel here, and then we'll have remainder over x minus a. So it's actually the same as what we had here. And what I'm doing is multiplying everything by x plus 4, so we don't have the fraction anymore. Okay. So let's say if x is equal to a. So what happens when the two numbers, x is actually equal to the value of a? Then we have p of a 
equal to a minus a times q of a plus r. So p of a is equal to, well, we can see that a minus a is 0. So 0 times q of a plus r. So 0 times anything is 0. So p of a is actually equal to the remainder. So that means that if I take the divisor number, the a value, and I plug it into the polynomial, I actually get the remainder. So let's try this out. So we're going to use the remainder theorem to determine the remainder of this polynomial when it's divided by x minus 2. <coughs> so according to this, remember that our divisor number is has to be, if you look back, it's x minus a. So this is already x minus. So our a value is going to be 2. So we're going to say p of 2 and equal to, so the 2 is our value that we're going to plug in to this polynomial here. So we're saying p, and instead of x, we're putting a 2 there. So everywhere we see an x, we're going to replace it with the number 2. So if 2 cubed plus 7 times 2 squared minus 3 times 2 and plus 4. So this gives us 8 plus 7 times 4 is 28 minus 6 plus 4 and that gives us 34. Now just to double check we're going to use long division or synthetic division. Let's use synthetic division because it's a little bit quicker and our coefficients are going to be 1, 7, negative 3, and 4. Our divisor number we can see is 2. We place it on the left side of the box. Bring down the 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Place it underneath. We add. 7 plus 2 is 9. Multiply. 2 times 9, 18. We add. We get 15. We multiply 2 times 15 to give us 30. And we add and we get 34, which is our remainder, which is the same as what we got using the remainder theorem. And there you have it. The remainder theorem works so that you don't have to use synthetic division or long division to find the remainder.